Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Oh my goodness. Uh, I didn't know if I was going to get on today. It showed me that we had no internet connection. I'm right around trying to figure out how to get internet connection. <laughs> I got to plan better, I'm telling you. So who is in the house today? I don't know. I just posted a video, so most of you have probably not seen it. But if you're on here, I'm going to tell you what it's about, and then you can go watch it. It's about one of the worst things that people face on the road when they become nomads. And I believe it's the number one reason that people leave the road and go back to sticks and bricks. I want some of you to guess, what do you think it is? What do you think it is that causes, I believe, more people to quit being nomads, quit van life, quit RVing, other than, you know, if they become desperately ill, but that's not the majority of people. I think this issue affects the majority of people in van life. And the crazy thing is it's not just restricted to van life. It's in even in sticks and bricks and maybe even more so there. But anyhow, let me say hello to some folks before we get started. Hey, Barry, you're the first one in the house. Hello, hello. Uh, thank you, thank you. I've got to make you a moderator, Barry, because uh, let me go on here and see about making you a moderator so you can um, tell everyone what's going on and also drop links and, and do everything else. Oh my goodness because you are such a big help. Oh, I've got the, I have got the best moderators. I'm telling you, let me see um, if I can get on here. I, you know, you guys know, oh, I, I've got the, I uh -oh. have got the best you can hear that. You guys know that I do not, um, I don't, um, I don't multitask very well. So I'm going to try and add him as a ad. Okay, Barry, I added you as a moderator. Okay, uh, but hey, Elsa, hello, hello. Lisa's in the house from Outdoor Dash Travels, one of my members, Bond's on a roll, oh my goodness. So I'm trying to see what you guys think. Hey, Liza, oh, okay, you see this topic is perfect timing for you. It's something that we need to address because it's affecting a lot of people on the road and not Liza, and I think everyone deals it. I think almost everyone deals with this at some point in their life. Liza says, looks like I'll be living on the road. Oh my goodness. Well, hey, we'll have to meet up definitely because I know if 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 um you are Nora's aunt, I'm no, Nora's aunt, Nora's niece, you're gonna be one of my very favorite people because she is. So hey, who else is in the house? Uh Red, hey Red, how's it going there? Redheaded riding hood. And Liza says, hey, everyone who lives on the road, what are your favorite vehicle recommendations? Wow, that's a hard one. That is a hard one. Hey, Granny Prepper. Hello, hello. Welcome. Well, it sounds like you are a prepper. I tell you what, I respect preppers because I think you're ahead of the curve, ahead of the game. And I think we all need to be doing some prepping right about now because I think things are getting ready to go wild go wild and i mean it but we'll see but welcome welcome in the house granny prepper i'm glad you're here hey rose hello how are you doing three generations is in the house hey tara how are you is it tara or tara i said tara but um hey wanda is in the house from southern arizona well you know what i'm gonna be possibly back well not possibly probably back oh. in arizona jessica's going because she she doesn't want to go you don't want to see all my wonderful globies no uh-oh oh, how could she say such a thing oh my goodness Let me against you guys it's just i've already been there learned went there two times one in december it wasn't january i'm like i'm done i i was just in the van the whole time I'm okay done. well she you hear her she says she's done she's done <laughs> Hey, Lindy. Hello. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lindy from Lava Lindy's Awesome Van Adventures. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're my, welcome. There's my assistant. Yeah. <laughs> giving me something to wet, wet my whistle. Of course, you know, you guys know where I got it from. But um, Vons and Rose says the main thing is expenses. Nope. Nope. Hey, Kathleen. Hello. Hello. Uh, oh, you watched the video already, Granny. Okay. Well, then, you know, you know, Granny Prepper. 
Uh, hey, Debbie Hawk. Hello, hello. Uh, Sandra's in the house. Um, yep, Nan, that's it. Loneliness. And Kathleen, you guys both got it. It's loneliness. Um, <clears throat> it's a sense of isolation. It's a sense of not having a connection. Think about it. When you are in a sticks and bricks, well, I mean, a lot of people are in homes and apartments are very lonely. They have no connection to anyone, you know, but at the very least, you at least go to the same grocery. You see, at least see some of the same people. You might go to the same library, see the same librarian. That's, those aren't relationships and those aren't connections, but there's some familiarity. But when you're on the road, everywhere you go, unless you're going back to somewhere you've already been, is a new place. The people you are meeting for the first time are strangers. Even going into a grocery store, you don't know where stuff is. You got to look all over to find the soup or whatever. It can be a very lonely existence. And I have a video that I did today. I just posted it. So I hope you all go over and see it and then share it out. In that video, I also took clips from a wonderful couple from Less Junk, More Journey. I didn't know this, but did you know in their first year, after their first year or so on the road, they almost quit? Can you imagine? They've now been on the road nine years. They have had a baby while on the road. They have started a group to bring people together in community. But I brought, I put in some clips to my video from them sharing. And, and they're a couple. They're a couple that from from what I can see, and I think it's they're genuinely, this is genuinely so, they're a couple who have a wonderful relationship, a loving relationship, a great family, yet they talked about how miserable or how, I guess, isolated and lonely they were when they first started, apparently for the first year. And that's because, again, you don't have the familiarity, even if you're two people we were made, I believe, what do you guys think? I believe we were made to be part of a community. We're made to belong to something. We're made to work in concert with others. And when you're on the road, you don't have a regular church. You know, sometimes your church is your regular uh, group of people. Sometimes if you're going to school or taking classes, but you don't have any of that when you're first on the road because you don't know anyone. And if you don't know about meetups and they share how they didn't know about meetups, they didn't know about rallies, they didn't know about all of those things. And they were so, so desperately lonely. But check out the video and see what they're saying. But anyone that's been on the road that feels like that, um, that has felt like that. Hey, Jill from Northern California. Um, yeah, Sandra, it is loneliness. And I want to talk about if there's anyone who's full-time on the road or even part-time, what are some of the things that you do to alleviate that? Because, you know, especially if you're traveling a lot, if you're traveling from place to place to place, you're only there sleeping and then you're, you, and then you're moving on. You're sleeping for the night, moving on. You're not going to make friends doing that. And if you're a shy person, it can really be a challenge. Red says, Red dealt with that, Carol. Yep, yep. If it weren't for YouTube, I would not have even lasted a year probably. Well, it's funny you should say that, Red, because I have five things in the video that five suggestions and things that I suggest that people on the road do and start doing them right away in order to combat the loneliness, the depression, the sense of isolation. And one of them is YouTube, not just starting necessarily a channel, but even going on other people's channels. Just think of the group that we have here on this chat every Saturday, how we, we, you know, we know when someone's kid is having a, uh, they're going to have a grandchild. We know like with Chef Santa when he's sick and I ask for prayers. We know when people are buying a new rig or who's going to the RTR or who's going where. 
it is a way of connecting with other people on YouTube. Some I have some very, very good friends, including Nora. Nora is a very someone I consider a very dear friend who I met on this live. So people say, well, how can you meet someone? How can you really become good friends with someone on 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 internet? You'd be surprised how many people form friendships. And you know, you you hear about some of these people who are being suckered because they're they're giving millions or thousands, hundreds of thousands away to someone that they met on the internet because they think they have a huge connection. But I'm talking about real connections with genuine people who are real people, not pretending to be someone. You really can do that. Hey, Fab 50 Van Life. Oh my goodness. There, and that's I, your name reminds me of something, Fab 50. And that is that on YouTube and even on Facebook, there are so many groups. Um, there is like women over 60, there's van life and courtside, there's you know, solo van life, there's you name it, whatever your interest is, there's a Facebook group that you can go on and talk to and meet people. I think even Hawa has um, a virtual chat, or they used to on Sundays. I don't know if they do anymore, but that's a wonderful way to meet people. Hey, uh, did I say hello to Sandra? I think so. Um, Liza says, I'm sticks and bricks and it's not so hot. You know, that's the other thing. I was talking to someone the other day and they were talking about how desperately lonely they are. And they live in a condo. They live in a condo. They're not on the road. But they said their neighbors don't have time. They're busy. They're all working. And they say it's it's an older person. And they were telling me they have very few connections. They don't have children. So it, it can be. It really can be. And I think some of the same things that you do on the road, like reaching out to people who have similar interests. I have a friend who met her husband at a Sierra Club meeting and they've been married for what, 20 years, happily married. So going to places where people that have the same interest as you have are, you know, meeting with them. But um, yeah, I think that's one of the things to do, Liza. Um, Cherie says, yeah, it is lonely. Yes, Cherie, it can be very lonely on the road, but it also can be, but it doesn't have to be. And I don't think it has to be in sticks and bricks either. On the road, I'm going to tell you something. Since I have started doing van life part-time, I have met some amazing and wonderful people who have become lifelong friends. I mean, truly lifelong friends. And you have to go to the video to see how, but I, I'll i give you one tip. Well, this is the second thing I'm going to tell you, but I just want you to go watch the video. But one thing I will tell you, whether you are in a house, an apartment, or in a, living in a van, a trailer, what have you, you have to be intentional about meeting others. People are not going to come knocking on your door, banging on your door, you know, to meet you. You have to set a plan, make a plan, set it in place, and then follow it intentionally with the intention deliberately going out for the purpose of meeting people and making friends. That's what you have to do. Even if it's going to the library, if they have a book club at the library, many, many libraries have book clubs. They have a book club. If they have a, um, uh, I'm not, I was going to say sewing bee. That certainly wouldn't be my thing because I can't sew a stitch. But you get my drift. You know, finding something that really is a passion of yours that you enjoy, that you love, even if it's going to different um, events. But it's harder at a concert, I think, to meet people because people are there to really focus on the, the performer, not the people around. I think at a book club or something smaller and more intimate like that, you get to hear a person's perspective and it lets you know a little bit about that person and who they are and lets you get an idea. Is this someone that, you know, I could relate to or I could get along with or we would have something in common? Let's see who else is in the house here. Hey, Diane. 
Diana Anders from Murrieta. I'm in your neck of the woods today. I in Murrieta today, Diana. I was gonna go to my very favorite place um, that's not too far from here, but just didn't have time. I am gonna have to do it another day. Uh, hey, fantastic family. Uh, Nora says, I don't think it matters if it's sticks and bricks or living in an RV. It's always about community and feeling isolation. Absolutely. You have to build your tribe. You have to build your community. And one person at a time, you know, and going out and just meeting people. Priscilla says, hi, Carol, picked up my dog's ashes yesterday. Oh, I'm so sorry, Priscilla. End of a long road. I'll be heading headed out on the road soon. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, how sad. I know you'll be thinking about your beloved dog all the time when you're in your rig. Oh, what what a different what a different experience it'll be for you without your loved dog, beloved dog. I'm so sorry, Priscilla. I know I would be heartbroken and will be when Cuddles moves on if he goes before me. <laughs> Who knows? You, you know, tomorrow's not promised. You don't know. But um, who else is in the house? Hey, Seraphim, how are you? Hello from Canada. Oh, my goodness. Hello, hello. Let's see who else is uh, that I haven't uh, said hello to. Hey, Don Cor, hello, hello. Liza said a year's worth of rent would probably pay for a tiny home. It probably would, depending on, you know, how fancy you, you made it. Um, let's see. Uh, which is what I really want, a tiny home community. I need the community and nature. There are tiny home communities sprouting up all over the country. And that's one of the things that so many of the people that I interviewed and spoke to at Incredible Tiny Homes said they were there because they wanted to be part of a community. And I think everyone wants to belong to something. You know, everyone wants to have someone you can call when something's going wrong. You can rant or you can call when something's wonderful has happened to share it with. How cool is it to be able to share the ups and downs in your life with a person who really understands, you know, but one of the things I think about van life is um, it's helpful to have people who either are part of the life or who have been part of the life. Because when you call someone who, you know, is living in a house and you're telling them, Oh my gosh, I drove around for an hour trying to find somewhere to park tonight. Uh, and they're, they, they don't get it. You know, you can't park in front of someone's house or you shouldn't because it's going to be a problem. You can't park maybe in on this block or in this town because signs are up all over. No parking for, you know, RVs. And they just don't get it. And they just don't get how discouraging it can be, how exhausting it is to drive all day long. And then that late afternoon, early evening, start looking for somewhere to 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 park, to lay your head to rest because you're just bone tired and you just can't find somewhere and you're looking and driving another 10 miles looking, driving another five miles looking. They don't, they won't get it because they haven't had to have that experience. So it helps having people in your life. If you are a full-time RVer or anything you're doing in life, it helps to have people who have shared similar experiences. So they have some point of reference to understand, you know, what you're going through. Let's see who else is here uh, in the um, red says I'm hanging in there, Carol, been going through stuff, but I'm good. Thank God. Uh, I'm sorry to hear you've been going through stuff, red and uh, give me a call. Anytime you want to chat or talk, you know, I'm here. Maggie says I'm sticks and bricks in Southwest Virginia and lonely with not a soul I can relate to. Oh my goodness, Maggie, that just demonstrates the point that I'm making. But this is one place you can come. You can say hi to people. People will know you. Can everyone say hello and greet Maggie? Uh, say, uh, Globy, say hello to Maggie, would you? And um, Jessica, please, I can't have that while I'm on my live, okay? You can stand right there. It's a voiceover. Okay. But can everyone say hello to Maggie and greet her?
but that's that's the exact precise point that I'm making. Are there any? Do you have a church that you attend, Maggie? Are are there any book clubs or any organizations or groups that you could join to a community center? Maybe I don't know if you're a senior or not. If you're a senior, a senior citizen, where you could go to meet people and go to events. You just really have to reach out or you will not make those connections. Adele says there's a lot of Facebook groups that you connect with and travel with or go to their meetups. That is so true. And that's one of the points you you hit on one of the points I make in the video, Adele. There are Facebook groups. There are meetups. I meet so many people at meetups, including my own, you know, Um and that's really a way to, to do it. Hey, hey, Cherie. Uh, hello, Jean. How's it going? Um, uh, Nora's saying hi to Jessica. She stepped outside for a minute. Huh? Um, Kathleen says, I've been mini prepping at my rural place. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mini prepping. I keep trying to mini prep and then I run out of something and use my prep stuff. <laughs> but I'm going to have to do better because I really, seriously, all joking aside, I think we really, I don't know what's coming down the pike, but I think we may have some stuff coming down the pipe that we may need to be prepared for, and we may need to have supplies stocked up. I think even having extra medication stocked up, water, a generator, I just think that, you know, things could get pretty Whichever way it goes on the election, I think we could have some, I, I think we could just have some problems. Let me put it like that. So I think we need to all be starting to prep. Um, let's see. Uh, Kathleen says, is Jessica having a rough day? No, believe it or not, this is a typical day. This is a good day. So this gives you an idea what a rough day is like, huh? <laughs> this is a good day. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything more. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Uh, Jill says, Jessica and, young mo and most young people like my child don't like that type of travel. I know. I know. Their friends are their main, main thing right now, as with her. Hey, Janet says, I'm lonely and miserable all the time. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Janet. I lost my, oh, no. I lost my apartment a year ago and have no one to talk with or do things with. When I try helping people, they take advantage and I get used up. You know, Janet, maybe starting out talking to people um, in some lives, in some YouTube lives. A lot of people have the lives and some of them, like this one, we talk to each other, we greet each other, we say hi, we tell what's going on. And does anyone have any suggestions for Janet, some things that she could do, um, anyone who's now, when you say you lost your apartment, so where are you living? What kind of, what is your circumstance right now, Janet? Um, Red says, Janet has travel fatigue. She does. Jessica, rather. Jessica has travel fatigue. Yeah, she does. Maybe she can stay home. No, not alone. That's not an option, unfortunately. Maybe there's a friend who can look after her. I have done that in the past. When I went back east, she stayed with my brother and his wife, but they're 500 miles away, so... That's a challenge. And then when I, um, her, her big sister sometimes is an option that we can check out too. Red headed riding hood says, Oh, I already said that. Hey, Mrs. Miller in the house. Um, Oh, thank you. Three generations is saying thumbs up. Yes. Hit that thumbs up. That really, really helps. I don't understand all the ins and outs, but it helps the the algorithm and um, helps to to get things going here. Uh, Alexis Lee says, hello world. Oh, your dog Rocky Mickey Mouse here. <laughs> oh, now that's quite a name. Uh, Fab 50 says, fishing takes my woes away. Any free time I'll go fishing. You know, having something that you really enjoy and that really, um, can you give me a napkin for my nose, please, Jessica? Um, up above. I know where they are. You tell me that when I just sat down. Okay, Jessica. Uh, anyhow, um, yeah, having something that you enjoy doing that you can go do, 
Um, we ain't got no more. It's up above my thing. Oh, your thing. Okay. Um, it 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 really helps. What happened to my sides? I don't know. No. I can't tell you, no. but um, uh, everyone's saying hello to Janet and, and saying they're so sorry to hear that, Janet. Granny Prepper says, I'm a single disabled citizen. I live in a fifth wheel and it can get a bit lonely. Yeah, I think, you know, maybe we should have a lonely hearts club, huh? Um, excuse me. I'm having to blow my nose here on, on camera. Sorry. But maybe, I don't know. What do you guys think? Maybe I can do a live. I don't know if I have the time. But maybe I can do a live maybe once a month where we just all get on and talk about what's going on in our lives and, and encourage each other. Or, or maybe, you know what? Maybe, how about this? How about one live a month? Maybe the first live of the month will be We'll call it the Lonely Hearts Club or maybe the Unlonely Hearts Club because we're going to make it unlonely the first Saturday. Let me know what you guys think of this idea. We'll get on and we'll talk about things and we'll ask each other for advice and suggestions and we'll say what's going on and really just talk to each other. And maybe I can bring some of you up to say hello and introduce you to people. And um, I think that might be something that that's an idea because I'm talking about loneliness and stuff. I, I don't only like to bring up problems or challenges. I like to also come up with solutions. So if anyone else has any solutions, could you bring them up or let me know what you um, think about it? Red says going places where, you know, no one all the time where you are an outsider. Yeah. And that's where I was. The first RTR I went to, I knew no one. I was just kind of walking around, looking around like, you know, what are all these people, you know? And, and at the first RTR, there was, I mean, there was, it, there was music camp. There was the wild camp. There was the party camp. So there were a lot of out there people, kind of like Schooly Palooza was this year. So I was like, okay, what is this? You know, and I'm kind of conservative. So I was, huh, Jessica, don't do that to him, please. So I was, um, but I didn't really meet anyone. I just observed, but the second year, I'll, I tell you about it in the video that I posted today. I went there with the intention to meet people and make friends. And that's what I did. And that's why I say you have to be intentional. You can't just say, Oh, I, even if you go to a book club, well, I'm just going to go to the book club and I'm just going to sit there, you know, and just kind of listen. No, no. You go there with the intention of making friends. The Bible has a saying, I don't know if someone knows what it is exactly but it says you have to show yourself friendly to have friends and that is such great advice you have to be put yourself out there and sometimes risk you know someone saying not interested or someone not responding or not responding in kind or just walking off but you know what you have to what do they say you have to kiss a lot of frogs to find a prince and sometimes you have to kiss a lot of frog friends <laughs> to find a, a prince of a friend, you know. But, um, oh, thank you. Everyone saying hello to Janet. Uh, oh, hello, Miss Nett. Welcome into the house. Uh, Kavita says, I agree. I'm totally isolated. It's so painful. Well, I think we're going to do that. We're going to we're going to do an experiment. The first Saturday of every month is going to be called Lonely Hearts or Unlonely Hearts. You guys come up with a name and let me know, club. And on that Saturday, we're going to um, just talk about our lives, ask suggestions, say what we're doing. You know, everyone can greet. Well, you already greet each other. But I think maybe be more intentional since that's the I'm going to say intentional is the word of the day today for this live. Be more intentional about each of us even reaching out to each other in this chat. Hey, hello, hello, everyone. Kavita says, I agree. Oh, I already read that. I'm sorry. Vaughn says, I think the loneliness is much less with the introverts. True for me. Probably true. Possibly true, I should say. I'm not going to say probably. I'm going to say possibly. Because even a person 
who's an introvert needs to have some interaction. Just think of it, Vaughn, you came to my meetup. You know, you're an introvert, but you still came to the meetup I had in Las Vegas and you, you know, you met some lovely people and, you know, so we, with an introvert, maybe there's not as high a need and maybe it doesn't need, you don't need someone pouring into you all the time, but there's still a need. I don't think anyone is totally living a full life. If you're like a hermit living by yourself, never having interaction, meaningful interaction, not just in passing, but meaningful interaction with others. I mean, heck, look at, look at what is it? Adam, God gave him, him Eve. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. Well, men, especially, sorry guys in the chat, but it's not good for man to be alone. And I think that's the perfect example that we need each other. We need, we need companions, friends. Um, Granny Prepper says, I think that's why so many van people have pets. I agree. I absolutely agree, Granny Prepper. You, when you go to a van gathering, I would say a good 80%, maybe more, but at least 80% of the people there have at least one pet. So true. Good point. Good point. Thank you, Red, for dropping their link. And I am supposed to be dropping the link to the video that they did about the how, how they almost quit van life. But I'm going to go back and add it to the description. I was running so behind. I don't think I added it to the description, but I'm going to go add that. But thank you very much. I appreciate that, Red. Christina Jenkins said, I needed this topic. I'm just starting and I'm so scared about being alone. Thank you. Christina, I get so many people emailing me, telling me they're starting and they're so alone. Right away, start connecting with people. There's Home on Wheels Alliance. Sometimes they have caravans. I don't know if they're having a caravan going on right now, but sometimes they have caravans where you can join a caravan. They have the chat. They used to have a Facebook or something group called We Camp Together, where you could go on there to find people to camp with. But um, also go and find out who's having meetups. You can go to Van Life Meetups online and find out about meetups. And right now, I don't know how close you are to Courtside. There are still people at the long-term visitors area areas and, um, and at the 14-day uh, BLM. And they have campfires. I used to, you know, hey, I would go see campfires unless it was like a family and it was just one, you know, and I knew it was very private, but it was a, you know, a whole group. I would kind of, kind of have meander by stroll by with my chair, say hi, you know, and sometimes people would say, Oh, come join us. Or sometimes I would say, Oh, uh, can I come over and sit down? And I have never had someone say, no, you can't. Now I've had a few looks like, who is that? But I've never had anyone say no. And you know, this last time, I don't know if Barry's still in the live, but Barry, um, I was meeting Barry in Quartzsite and he was camping with some people. He met them and, you know, there and just pulled up, met them. They were having wonderful, wonderful, lovely people. They were having campfires every night. He, I joined his uh, park next to Barry and met some of the people that were there and just, I mean, but that's how it is now. Did, I didn't make any long-term connections there because I was really there to work um, that week of, of um, RTR. But if you're there intentionally to make friends and connections, you will. And you will make friends with people you can camp with. And that's one of the great things, Christina. That really is. But um, I'm curious, where are you going to be heading out to and starting out from, Christina? Um, Kathleen says people were meant for villages. That's so true. So true. We need to find a way to have new kinds of village communities. I'm shy. So it's hard. I bought a camp in Washington so I can have a spot to relax. Now, is that a escapee spot in Washington by chance? Or is it something else, Kathleen? But it's good. To, I think it's great to have a spot you can go to when you need a break and you want to come off the road for a little while, even if it's only a week, two weeks. But I think everyone needs that. Hey, Donna, Donna Flynn's in the house saying hello to everyone. Adele says, yes, I've 
connected to a lot of people on YouTube. They've become friends. People don't realize that that is possible. It really is very possible. And you can connect with a lot of people on YouTube and become very good friends, you know. Wanda says, question is, is it cheaper to maintain a vehicle instead of a home? I worry every day about new will break down in my older mobile home. Um, I would say if you have a vehicle that's mechanically sound, it can be a whole lot cheaper, depending. Now, if you live somewhere that your income only requires you to pay you know, $40 a month rent, uh, if you're on a sliding scale or something, then probably not, you know, um, because rent is the big thing that I think people save on when they're on the road. But it also depends on how much you're traveling. If you're going, you know, 300, 200, 300 miles a day every day or several days a month, you're going to be using a lot in gas. But now I know people who stay pretty um, stable around one general city or one area, and they're saving pots of money. It depends on how expensive your life was before you got into van life and how you do van life, you know. And, um, you know, there that's a question that's hard. I will say this. It can be. It can be much cheaper. It just depends. Um, hey, intentional frugality and budgeting. That's right on topic what we were just talking about. Hey, Simply C, hello, hello. Uh, Tara says, I always feel like I belong during Carol's lives. You do belong. I really want this to be a collective group of people, or a group of people who are connected together, who care about each other, who ask about each other. If there's someone who's on here regularly, like Graham, I don't see Graham today. Where the heck is Graham? If there are people who are on here regularly and they're not here, we miss them. And we, if they're not here a couple of weeks, we're going to be asking, hey, where are they? Are they okay? Has anyone heard from them? Because that's what I truly set out to curate or cultivate when I started this live. And I'm so glad. Thank you, Tara, for telling me that because that's exactly what I want it to be. Hey, Gia. Hello. Hello. Uh, say visiting wand watch Carol's videos and chats are very uplifting and promising. I've met many people online and found them to be real connections. Yeah, you can really. I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't some, you know, scammers online. There's scammers everywhere, including online. But there are just like not online online there are also some really truly genuinely wonderful people and um you know most of you i have not i've met some of you in person but a good number of you i've not met in person but i feel a connection with you i feel like we have a connection we are making a relationship and i hope each and every one of you are doing that in here uh red says wanda it's hard to say depends on the home and the vehicle yep Absolutely. That's the truth. Kavita says, as a woman nomad for years, it was very hard. Everyone looking like they are a part of a caravan. Not my experience. You know, everyone is not a part of a caravan. There are a lot of people who are not, but there are a lot of people who, because they don't want to be isolated, they don't want to be lonely, they make arrangements to meet up with people. You know, they made a friend of mine, Natalie, is come down from Canada and she's we're going to camp together. I don't know when, I don't know where, but we've been talking and we'll camp together. Some of your friends, you may only see them once a year. Like when she comes down, when it's cold in Canada, she comes down here. Other friends, you know, like um, uh, a very dear friend is headed for the East Coast. So I just camped with her in Quartzsite. So we probably won't get, be camping for a little while because she's going to the East Coast. But when she comes back, we're going to hook up and camp together again. So a lot of people, as you start your journey, if you reach out and are intentional, you will meet people all over the country and you will have people 
that when you you're going to say the balloon festival, you can call people and say, hey, I'm going to go to the balloon festival. You guys want to meet up there or, hey, I'm going to be in courtside. Let's meet up or, hey, I'm going to be here. Or, hey, I'm going to be there. That with time, you will develop that if you're intentional and set out to do that. It, it can be done, but it's it's not automatic. You have to really make the effort and put yourself out there. Adele says, I met up, met up with my coachman group in courtside and we'll meet up with some of them again in July. They're a great group. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You meet a group of people, say in courtside, or you have a group that you've got online and say some of them say, well, we're going to be going to, you know, A, B or C. And so you meet up with them there. And then as you're there, you're at the campfire, you're talking, you're saying, well, we want to go to Yuma or we want to go to like Havasar. We go, oh, OK, well, let's let's go. You know, let's I mean. Me, I have things that have to draw me back, including my daughter's uh, activities here. So I have to draw back and I don't have as much freedom as I otherwise would, but I still have freedom to travel like the trip I took on the East Coast. And But if you are full time, you don't have anything holding you back from meeting up with people, except for maybe the cost of gas and you might not want to go across the country. But like, just like Adele said, you meet up with a group and someone from there, chances are one of them is going to go be going somewhere that you'd be interested in going and you'll get along with them and you'll they'll tag along with you or you'll tag along with them. And you do that from place to place to place. And it's a wonderful thing. Hey, Mythical Nomad Adventure. Uh, G. Carol, please don't let your inner prepper loose on the live channel. Don't want fear loose out here. My inner prepper. No, I don't, I don't, I don't want to have, I don't want to, I'm not a fear monger, but I do think that there will be some things that we will need to be prepared for. I don't know. I don't know how big, how little, but I think, you know, honestly, I think it always pays to be prepared. Look at all the rains we just had. I mean, it was terrible. Look at some people were flooded. Some people, I mean, you know, some people lost power. It pays to be prepared, to have extra supplies, to have a generator. It play, it really pays to be prepared. And in some areas of the country, more so than other areas. I mean, California, typically, unless you're in certain areas, you didn't have to worry. But now, all bets are off. You know, we had rain, like they say, we haven't had in, what, a thousand years, a hundred years, but something a long, long time. And I think this may be our new normal. So we need to start prepping. I don't know about you, but when it's raining like that, I don't even like going out to the store to get supplies. So when it's raining like that, and I'm going to have to be indoors maybe for a couple of days. I want to have the things that I need, you know? So yeah, no, I don't want to make people um, scared, but, but it just, in general, it pays to be prepared. Um, Granny Prepper says, Christina Jenkins, congratulations on getting started. I'm a little jealous. Got to get a van. That is, that is a good point, Granny. Congratulations, Christina. That is wonderful. It's exciting. I know it's scary exciting, but also exciting. And it's kind of, Christina, I'll say this, it will kind of be what you make of it. You have a lot of control over that. Um, Red says loneliness is a problem these days, either on or off the road. It is. It is. Because for so long we've been living, you know, individual, random, isolated lives. And as people maybe retire or something, they have not maintained friendships or developed new ones. And as you get older, let's face it, as sad as it is, you know, people around you depart this earth. So, um, you, your, your, your inner circle and your circle of friends starts to diminish as you get older. And I feel so blessed that that is not the case now that I'm involved in van life. Uh, Nora says, I think regardless of the situation, it does take effort to create community, to be part of one. It does. And that's the whole point I'm making with the word of the day, intentional. You have to be intentional. It, it doesn't just happen. Jill W says, Carol, great suggestion. Community centers. Yes, yes. Um, in every city, join groups, churches in every city, parks and recreation have places. We have some uh, thoughts. Say We have same thoughts. Yes. Um, 
a lot of churches now have small groups and I strongly urge you if your church has small groups and that's because they want people to make those connections. So they have small groups, join one of those small groups if you can, you know, Christina says, granny, I got a minivan and away I went. <laughs> Where are you? Do you, if you don't mind saying at least what, what end of the country, are you on the East coast, the West coast, or do you want to share that Christina? Um, I miss, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I'm a Smith. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I actually caught you live. Yay. Yes. Thank you. I'm so glad you did. Welcome into the chat. And 100% facts on your point. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, intentional frugality and budgeting says, I agree. Everything has to have intent. Yeah. You know, when I started this YouTube channel, I had intent. I had a plan. I had a goal. I had time frames. I wanted to meet those goals. I, I had mission statements, what I wanted to accomplish, what I wanted to do, what I wanted this channel to be about. It was very intentional. Someone said to me once, they said, wow, when you started this channel, you started it out like it was a business. Yeah, I did because it is a business, but it's also a community. So I started it out with the intention of doing the things, the very things I'm doing right now. I mean, it's just like if you take a trip, do you take a trip without having a map or knowing where you're going or knowing your route? No, that's what intention is. Intention is your life map and we all need one. Uh, let's see. Uh, hey, Marta. Yep. It's loneliness. Martin one. Absolutely. Outdoor dash travels. Lisa says joined a group of other Tofino owners to connect with. That's a great idea. You know, there's some group out there that is part of something that you enjoy or that you are part of, or that you're connected. You have connections with others you just have to find and identify what they are red says after a year here in denver my younger son moved to bend oregon when i came here i was so lonely but now i found a church and got a part-time job there you go there you go you're going out meeting people making those connections otherwise i would have followed my son to oregon yeah um you know they say in a church that in order for a person to stay, they need to make a connection with at least one person. Otherwise, they're probably not going to stay in that church. That's even in church, you need to make a connection. Wands in a Roll says, look how many people don't know their neighbors. This is common nowadays. It's very common. I talked to someone the other day who doesn't know any of their neighbors. The person who said, I was telling you earlier, lives in a condo, doesn't know any of her neighbors. You know, it's very, it's not unusual. When I was growing up, we knew all of our neighbors and the neighbors, we knew all of the kids, you know, the neighbors looked out for the kids, you know, often neighbors would bring you a pie or a cake or whatever and holidays or whatever they, they cooked for their, whatever their traditions were, they brought you something over. I mean, we just don't do that anymore. We have gone into our little caves, sealed the door and there we stay huddled. And I just refuse to do that. It's just, I would just wither and wilt if I did that, you know? Now, don't get me wrong. I love my alone time. And I love sometime camping by myself because I just have to rest, catch up, regroup. But I do need to have some connections with people. I talk to at least a couple friends every day on the phone at least a couple. And tomorrow I'm going to be watching the Super Bowl with the friend, you know, so, but everyone, hello is greeting everyone. Uh, Granny Prepper says, Christina, I will get there someday. I have physical disabilities, so I need a regular size van. Yeah. You really need to, when you're picking your vehicle, if you're going to go, going to go on the road, I suggest trying a couple of things. I rented a minivan out when I went to the first RTR because I wanted to see, could I do it on the road travel? I've been a hundred thousand, over a hundred thousand miles in five years. So I needed to know that I could be comfortable in whatever I got. And I, I was not comfortable in a minivan because I would, I knew I was going to be doing some mad traveling. Now, if you're staying around and you're spending so much more time out of your van than in, you know, and you've got to know what works for you. But I, that 
I rented that and it let me know, helped me to know better what I needed. Uh, Priscilla, Priscilla, you're in my prayers. You really are. Liza says the blue zones were the most centurion, uh, okay, 100 year olders, centenarians, I hope I got that right, um, across the world. One of the things that makes the longevity is community. I bet. I bet. I don't. I bet you don't meet a lot of people over 80 who are living in isolation and no friends, no anything. Because they did a study. Well, they didn't do a study specifically for this because it would be unethical. But they have found that children who don't um, get a lot of touch when the, shortly after birth and when they're really tiny babies, they don't get touch or interaction or no one, they fail to thrive. They, they, and they can even pass on, you know, because everyone, even a little baby needs connections, needs touch, needs to be around others. Um, and that's one of the reasons uh, that pets, so many people have pets because just holding your pet, that fills and fulfills, you know, um, a certain need that we all have. Um, uh, I'm a Smith says, this is my first time joining Carol. Thank you. I am so glad you're here. I really am. And may your adorable fur baby run, jump and rest in peace. Uh, yeah. Um, Priscilla, uh, Kathleen says, hi, part-timer here. Also leaving Arizona for Washington class C. I think I have the best of both lives. I, I tell you, I really do. I, I I think more and more people are going, I think once COVID hit, more and more people started, it started to trend towards getting a little plot of land. So even if you're full time, you had somewhere you could go and just take a break. I think having a homestead, a home base, it's just wonderful because no matter how lonely I might get on the road, I know I have somewhere to come back to where I have friends and someone I know, but actually I'm not very lonely on the road because whenever I'm on the road, I'm usually heading to somewhere to meet up with people. So I'm just whew, going in a straight line to get to the destination, to meet up with friends and um, other people. So uh, let's see. Uh, Granny Prepper is saying hello to Ima. Yes, everyone greet our first timers here. Uh, oh, Granny Prepper, yep, first timer. Can everyone can everyone greet Granny Prepper and Ima? Because I was going to say first timers in the house. In fact, it's getting about that. Oh, it's that time. Anyone else, if it's your first time in the house, can you put in number one so everyone can greet you, including greeting Granny Prepper and Ima Smith, so we can let them know that we pull them in. We're giving them virtual hugs. We're welcoming them and we are a welcoming safe space to be. Um, Red says, Carol, I'm in. Uh, oh, you're, I'll be, Ooh, I'll be in San Diego for the Switchfoot getaway in June, the 17th to 20th. I hope we can get together sometimes. Absolutely. You know, I'll forget that. So remind me uh, a month or so, but I'm going to put it on my calendar. That helps me. But yes, definitely I want to get together, Red, and do some fun stuff. So maybe we'll go up to the hot springs, huh? Uh, one of my favorite places. I'll introduce you to one of my favorite places. Hey, original Mama Grizzly, I haven't seen you earlier in the live. Welcome, welcome in. Hey, Brenda Burner. I think I'm kind of way behind on comments here. And Rose Grace is in the house. Oh, my goodness. Uh, um, oh, Jeannie says coming from Tehachapi, California. That's one of the areas I kind of looked at uh, for land for um, for a tiny, my RV slash tiny house village. And it was kind of expensive there. So I'm looking for someplace that's a little bit on the cheap. Um, but Maggie, welcome, welcome, Maggie. Uh, Sandra is saying welcome to Maggie. Gina is saying senior citizen. Yes, definitely. Uh, Feminim is saying hi to Maggie. Hey, Debbie Johnson is saying hello. Um, let's see, who else have I not, anyone that I have not greeted? I think I have. Um, 
Uh, and Priscilla is saying, hi, Maggie. Same here in my condo. Stay connected here. Globies are lovely. I tell you, the best, the best online community, I think, online anywhere. But, of course, you guys know I'm very biased because I love each and every one of you. Um Red says, I will text you my new number. Oh, you got a new one. Okay. The old one is still supposed to work, but so far only for texting. I have a Colorado number and the old Georgia number. Okay. For my kids who never call me. <laughs> Isn't that typical of kids, Red? Isn't that typical of kids? Okay. Uh, Diana says, Carol, question. Spring meetup planned. I don't know, Diana. I don't know. I am planning a party in March. For Jessica, she's out of here now, but it's her 21st birthday. So we're having an, and I, I, I fell down on the job. I have to admit it. It's, her birthday is next month in March. And here it is February. I started planning, trying to call. And I was like, you know what? I can't do this. I can't do this. So I called in some help um, with someone, a party planner, who's going to help me because it just, I just got overwhelmed It's because you have to get the place. You have to get you know the dj you have to get the direct director decorations the food i was like this is just too much i need some help so i'm hoping this lady is not going to charge an arm and a leg and she'll help me pull it all together but um a spring meetup how many people would be interested in going to a spring meetup um do two thumbs up do thumb up thumb up uh, you know, the little sign to let me know that you're are, are put SP in the comments to let me know if you're interested in a spring meetup. I don't know. I'll have to think about that, uh, Diana. Um, if I do, I might have it up at the hot springs, uh, actually in right, not too far from Marietta. Liza says, I agree with stocking up in general. I'd love to be one of those coupon experts. I know I just don't have what it takes to be a coupon expert. I wish, I wish I had what it takes to be a lot of things, but I, I have identified what my strengths are and I work in my strengths, <laughs> you know? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, thank you. Red original mama grizzly is praying for you. Granny prepper says, rotate your preps, use them and replace them. I know I just haven't gotten it down to a science, but I'm working on it. Granny prepper. I'm working on it. I need to go over and check out your channel and get some, um, some suggestions. Um, intentional frugality and budgeting says, I agree, Carol, we need to be ready and prepared. I think we do. You never know. Um, Sarah M says, hi, Maggie singing, sending you hugs from Toronto, Canada. Oh my goodness. I went to the, shoe museum in toronto that was the most fascinating place who would think a shoe museum could be interesting but it was it had shoes back from i guess maybe the cavemen i mean from all oh it just had it was one of the most interesting places i've ever been the shoe museum in toronto red says my computer is slowing down gonna log out and log back in but i got you on the tv so hopefully won't miss anything well, we're just getting ready to leave Red, so you're not going to miss much. Hey, Kenneth, says my favorite lady in Globies. I so enjoyed today's helpful video. I'm glad. I think it works not only for people in vans or nomad life, but I think it will work for everyone. So, guys, go over and check out the video I posted this, well, this afternoon. And I was trying to get it up this morning, but I had Gardner come over because I have trees that are taking over, and I got a uh, a warning from the homeowners association about my yard, I'm sure. So I've got to, but anyhow, you know, it is what it is. Um, but my favorite, one of my favorite guys, Kenneth, uh, Liza says, Janet, what state are you in? Um, I'm says I co-host a weekly in-person and virtual zoom group every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for people who are alone with limited support. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds interesting. I'll have to check it out. Let me, I was going to take a picture of that. Let me, um, is it under your name? Let me, um, let's see. I'm been meaning to have, uh, I don't know if, if you guys remember, but last year I had a very, a dear friend on who is a psychologist and she gave some, um, so let me take a picture of this. Um, I'm a, 
she um, gave some suggestions and maybe I'll have her come on the first Saturday this month to give some suggestions on coping and dealing with loneliness because it is a real issue. So maybe I'll do that, you know, on our first uh, Lonely Hearts. I'll call her and see if she's able to do that because she's very busy, but maybe she will. Jill W says, I, under my daughter wants to be with me only. Oh my goodness. You're, wow, you're lucky. Not me. <laughs> my daughter wants to be with her friends only. Uh, uh, mystical or mythical. I'm sorry. Nomad is leaving. All right. See you later. Have a good week. All right. Well, we're going to, um, Femi Nim says, your favorite gym, moving is healing. Yes, that's true too. Taking a class, even, you know, they have the classes where you don't have to be, you know, you can do low impact because I would definitely have to do low impact. And navigating with Nana says, hi, Globies uh, from former Nana Van Glam. Changed my life plan and my YouTube name. Okay, navigating with Nana. All right, we'll remember that. All right, can everyone who is a... um has a channel would you all put up a c for content creator so we can know and we can go over and give you some love um let me do that that new name there let me get that down i gotta take a picture of that uh navigating with nana okay can we go over and give her some love and um and can my moderators will you drop your link and also nora doesn't have a youtube channel but she has a fabulous Etsy store. Nora K, go over and check out her amazing, just sensational artwork. All right, let's see. All right, we're going to be heading out. Mark H says, I volunteer one day per week at a homeless shelter. Last week was a great pe week. Two people moved into their own apartments after living in the shelter for a couple of months. Well, bless you. God bless you, Mark. That is such a great thing. And that is good news. That is great news. That must really have uplifted you seeing people's lives change like that, knowing you're a part of it. God bless you, Mark. God bless you. Uh, all right. Uh, Sandra is saying hello, hello. Once a month would be great, Mystery says. Okay. All right. First first Saturday, we're going to have our Lonely Hearts Club where we're going to we're going to kind of work through what the agenda is going to be, what the, you know, we're, we'll, we'll, We'll figure it out together. How about that? We'll figure it out together because I don't have all the great ideas, but we'll figure it out together. And every first Saturday, come on here. We'll talk about what's going on in your life. You can ask for suggestions. We'll give you virtual hugs, but we do a lot of that already, but we'll do more. We'll, we'll take it up a notch the first Saturday of every month. Okay. All right. And I'll bring some of you up and maybe you can introduce yourself and people can say hello and yeah, we're going to, we're going to be intentional. How about that? We're going to be intentional even more. So every first Saturday to, um, to really reach out and reach out and connect with each other. All right. All right. Um, all right. Everyone sing, saying that's a good idea. Okay. Uh, Kenneth says, I will just listen to that one live a month, but hopefully you'll still be in the other ones, Kenneth. I don't know where your uh, your uh, sidekick Graham is today, but I'm sure he's busy doing something fun. Um, Priscilla writes, warm hearts together, name for the group you're talking about hosting. I like that, Priscilla. That's a good, that's a good, a good name. Warm hearts together. Well, we'll I'll put that in consideration. And if we have any other suggestions, we'll take a vote and see what everyone wants to do warm hearts together though but that that certainly is in the idea within the idea of what we want to do okay um wanda says i have trouble making friends don't know how to start conversations well you know what why don't we have that as one of our things for next week can my moderators remind me because you know my mind is like a sieve things go in and right back out one of the things we'll talk about on the first, and I'll, let me write this down. Let me, let me get a picture of this. How about, that's a great topic, Wanda. How to start conversations. We'll start, that. why don't we do that? Yep. 
Oh, okay. Original Mama Grizzly says it was Proverbs that talked about showing, I think that's what you're talking about, showing yourself friendly to be a friend, to have friends. Dogs are the best friends. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Proverbs 1825, a man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Thank you, Red. Thank you. So you must be friendly yourself if you want to have friends. So we're, we'll do that. Um, Nora says, Wanda, if you have a group, if you find a group with a common interest, that might help a bit not to go with intention to make friends so that you don't put pressure on yourself. Just go to a class or event. That's true too. Yeah. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. If, if that's too overwhelming for you or too much pressure, don't do that. But you know, it's, you know, me, I can do it, but it, but everyone has different personality. You have to do what works for your personality and for you. Uh, okay. Yes. Warm hearts together. Uh, thank you. I'm in. Okay. Uh, as a lonely introvert, that's a great idea. Wanda says, I live in a mobile home in RV park and I don't know my neighbors. I don't get out of the house because I have trouble getting around. Hmm. Do they have, um, you know what, Wanda? How about this? How about contacting a local high school and tell them, you know, I'm almost homebound in my mobile home. And I'm wondering if you have any young people who, because a lot of high schools now require kids to do community service. How about asking if they have a program where maybe, and if they don't starting one, maybe where some of the kids who have to do community service can do it by coming around and visiting people who can't get out. You know, for safety, they would come in at least two and they would have to, you know, they probably would have to fingerprint you and stuff for the children's safety, but or the kids' safety. But maybe checking and seeing if there's a high school that has a program like that, because some do have programs that, and if they don't, you can suggest that to them. That's just, that's just one way, one suggestion. But you know what? We're going to come up with all kinds of suggestions on these, on this first Saturday. I know it's, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about it. Okay. I got to start planning for the first Saturdays, guys. Um, Original Mama Grizzly says, some people like me appreciating having their own time too. Yeah, that's, I appreciate my home time, my own time too. I love curling up with a book. And if it's a really good book, I can sit there for two days reading it, getting through it, finishing it. I'm telling you. Kenneth says, I turned 65 on Valentine's. Ah, oh, happy Valentine's and happy birthday. And don't want to think about loneliness. Oh my goodness. Well, happy birthday in advance, Kenneth. Oh, oh, what a, what a, you are such a love filled person. What a perfect day for you to be born on. Perfect day for your birthday. Oh my goodness. Kimberly is saying hello from Oklahoma. I'm a newbie on nomadic life. Any advice is welcome. God bless you all. Well, hit me up if you have any specific questions, Kimberly. You can hit me up at Glorious Life on Wheels at gmail because we're about to wrap up right now but hit me up at glorious life on, on wheels at gmail.com and if you have any specific questions and i will um do my best to answer them uh but i strongly urge you to go on to um youtube watch some bob wells especially his older videos when he was and his recent ones when he interviews people and they tell their stories and um just a lot of people who are starting out great, great, some great YouTube videos that I think will help and answer a lot of your questions. And if you're looking for something like, you know, information on solar or this or that, just put that in YouTube and, it, and it'll come up. Dozens of videos will come up. Hey, hello, I am a creator. Hello, hello. Uh, Wanda says, I turned 60 on Valentine's Day. Happy early birthday. Oh my goodness. Wanda and Kenneth, ah, soulmates, you both are turning, have a birthday on Valentine's Day. How cool is that? Well, happy birthday to you, Wanda. Mm, I'm sending you early love for your birthday. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, Mark says, what is one of the extra punishments in prison? Solitary confinement. That's an excellent point, Mark. That's an excellent point that... That's a punishment. 
being in solitary confinement that's a that's a brilliant point mark a really brilliant point need you say any need we say anything more need we really say anything more uh all right now says i've started going to concerts alone well you know what if you don't have someone to go with you don't not do things i've gone on cruises alone and met some fabulous people i must say so you know don't let not having someone to do something prevent you from doing it and enjoying life all right. Uh, Red says, I'm a bit of an introvert, but I get lonely and maybe that way um, and I've been hurt by many people. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Red. And I hope that that turns around and, you know, you have better people in your life now. Okay. See you later, Original Mama Grizzly. All right. We got to get going here. I am really behind on the... Thank you, Nora. Yes, hit the hit the um, thumbs up. And Diana says, Maddie, my black lab is my best friend. I tell you, those, they never complain, do they? <laughs> those friends never complain. Uh, dogs are our best friends. Says, I found the women I'm camping with now, thanks to a Facebook group, group for women's campers. I'm telling you, there are so many Facebook groups out there about camping and van life and women's groups and men's group and everything and you can find so many people to do things with um yep you're right seraphine even introverts need interaction all right lindy see you later uh mark says carol did you hear that blm closed a boondocking site near apache junction i did not <sighs> I, I that's a whole nother topic we'll have to get into another day but i'm afraid that as people abuse the land more and more are going to be closed i don't even want to think about it right now but i didn't hear that i'm so sorry to hear that because i hope that's not a sign of things to come mark uh villages not cities yes dogs are our best friend villages thank you red she dropped the link to uh less junk more journey why we almost gave up yep watch that but also watch my vid a video uh red can you drop the link for my video today also watch both of them i think great information they talk about it and i give some five specifics and i think both really are good um as far as not being um lonely on the road hey caroline you got in just in the nick of time we're just getting ready to go hey triathlete new york uh, just got home. I'm glad you caught us too, but we're getting ready to go. Adele says Lulu ways and butterfly tracks have great meetups and travels for women. Yes, I've heard that. I've heard that. Patty says hi from Corona. Hello, Patty. Hello from Corona. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Red. Thanks, Red. All right. Um, um, how, what about a Facebook group for lonely vanners? Bonds, why don't you start that? That's an excellent idea. Why don't you start that, Vaughn, on a roll? And I will join it. I will join it. And I will say, uh, um, oh, Mark says, thanks for the pit toilet segment. I did that for you, Mark. I did that especially for you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Barry, you're still on. Oh, my goodness. Barry's still on. Barry's on here. Say hi to Barry, Jessica. Hi, Uncle Barry. Oh, did you hear her? She said, hi, Uncle Barry. <laughs> oh my goodness. She calls Barry Uncle Barry now. Uh, Try Athlete says hello. Hope everyone is doing well and having a great weekend. All right. Hey, Hippie Mimi. Uh, Hippie Mimi, I'm sorry. Uh, Linda says, I know I need to be on more too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're heading out. Uh, let's see. Heading out, heading out. Nomad Curious that I met you at roadrunner after uh 2019 or 2020 ah oh, really nomad curious how cool i love meeting you guys i just love it uh connection we love you i love you guys too and you too kenneth and happy birthday again happy birthday to you and wanda um rose said i found one i found one right here best friends forever outdoor dash travels see see rest my case i rest the point all right. All right. Well, we're going to, uh, I'm trying to see, we're hanging out. Maggie Smith says, I think part of this is we are post COVID and it really caused a loss of connection. Yeah. It really did, especially for young people, especially for young people. And I don't think anyone's really addressed the trauma and the, the grief 
for so many of them experience from so many things they missed out, so many milestones in life they missed out on, from proms to graduation, you name it. Um, good point. Hey, Nosh, hello, hello. Ah, oh, we got Graham. Is Graham in the house? Well, we're getting ready to head on out. Okay, I don't see um maggie says good point just got off the phone with friend in sun city have been suggesting she do rv old lady purposely tried to trip her oh my goodness uh just leave oh my goodness oh uh intentional says my god did we forget the pandemic hope not being prepared is a great thing uh, not being per yeah we yeah we need to be prepared okay all right i look e i will look into it vons on a roll yeah, uh, let's get it. Let's get a a, a group a Facebook for lonely hearts, lonely warm, lonely warm hearts. All right, okay. We're uh, Noma Curie says for Forestville, California. The campground I'm at was on pre evacuation notice two weeks ago. Wow, wow. Oh my goodness. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't see any C's. I know. So I'm going to go through and say who I know is. I know Intentional for Galley and Budgeting. You have a channel, right? Uh, oh, Community Centers in Albuquerque are awesome. Okay. Um, Letha says this was a Pineapple Express from Hawaii, and it's not a new weather pattern. Okay. Rain in California. All right. Well, I don't know. We'll see. But we have been getting more rain each year than the preceding year here in California where I'm at and my brother uh, in North Carolina, they've been getting some things too. So I don't know. Pineapple Express, I don't know, but I know we certainly got a share a, a boatload of rain. Hey dog dude dude. Dog dude says always impressed by the close communities that have farmed in R V life. I know. We wanting to be part of it all, though getting late for soon to be 75 no it's not it's not late dog dude it is not late needed to stay put longer than expected to hope for more it's not late i know people in their 70s who started this so it's not not too late i started my youtube channel at 67 okay so it's not too late i need to go on the roads preaching that it's not too late to fulfill your dreams okay all right all right uh Okay, I am going to, Red says, my Sunday school class is like a small group, but it is as big as some small churches, but I love my church. Cool. Hey, let's see, Mapuana Kupunu. I think I said that right. Mapuana, I hope I said that right. Sitting love back to you. All right, I'm not seeing the, let's see, so I know Outdoor Dash Travels is a, um, uh, Outdoor Dash Travels has a channel. Red Riding Hood has a channel. Um, Donna Flynn Voice Training has a channel. Um, let's see. Uh, Nora has a site on Nora Cake on Etsy. Um, drop your link, if you will. All my moderators, if you would drop your link. Um, Maggie says, I'm not religious. That's a problem here in Southern West Virginia. Well, there are other groups, not just religious groups, Maggie. There's, you know, if there's a community center or if there's a book club or, you know, if there are other interesting things that are things that are of interest to you, you don't have to, you know, it's not only, I know some areas, especially in the Bible Belt, you know, that there's a lot that revolves around church, but there are other things Um but we're going to be talking about that more on the first Saturday. Um, Red says, took many trips now without a map. It was fun for a while, but now I'll be more intentional. Yes, good word, Carol. Yeah, be more intentional. Not Nothing like getting lost nah, to ruin a day. Hey, Repo, hello, hello. Nice to see you're doing a live. I know, I know I do. Um, yep, I do on every single Saturday. Uh, Kenneth says, remember the love connection? I know, I know. Every single Saturday at 3 p.m., all right, I keep saying this. I'm getting out of here right now. Um, uh, all right, I will be in touch, Red. Give me a call. You got my number or text me and let me know. Um, um, Priscilla says, Maggie, keep my name. We can connect when I finally get on the road. See? See there? Marta said, having horrible sciatica pain. Oh, using a heating pad. Pain pills not helping. Trying to make it to 8 p.m. And then hobble to the bathroom to brush my teeth and collapse into the bed. Nobody help me. I'm so sorry, Marna. Let's just say a prayer for Marna. Dear Lord, just 
strengthen Marta, help her to find something that relieves her pain and helps her to enjoy the day without having to have pain all day and all evening. And we just ask you bring people into her life that will be a help and an encouragement. And if not, come on here on Saturdays so that we can encourage you and wrap our arms around you virtually, Marta. All right. Maggie says, JB, no problem. If I was back in Arizona here in West Virginia, it is returned to the 50s uh, and the Jesus of judgment. Well, you know, that's not certainly the only Jesus, but he was a, a Jesus of love too. And um, maybe you just need to seek some people who, who, who know that and know the loving side of Christ. But Nomad Curious says, I wanted a van in the beginning, but ended up with a 2001 B plus for 1970 off Craigslist. Wow. A B plus is cool. Very cool. I wish I had gotten, I actually wish I had gotten a class C, you know, a bigger size, but you know, I love my van. Don't get me wrong. I love you, van. Don't, don't stop on me. Cause you're mad for me for saying that. But anyhow, all right. Uh, we're, I'm sorry, folks. I'm going to have to, um, um, uh, Nomad Curious says, I was a full-timer, but it gets too cold. I'm renting a room for two to three months. I want to do some updates in RV. Well, you know, sometimes that's a good idea to get a break. Take a break. Everyone needs a break, you know? And um, it sounds like you needed a break. Nomad Curious is first time in the channel. Can you guys give her some love? Give Nomad Curious some love. Give Repo some love. You already give Granny... Granny Prepper, some love. They're first times here in the house. And Vicki W says, newbie here wanting to do this life. Have watched so many videos. I was caregiving for my mom who just recently passed, looking for a van now. I'm so sorry to hear about your mom passing. What a blessing that was for you to be able to look after your mom. A blessing to her and a blessing to you to know that you were a wonderful daughter to her. All right, so I am heading out right now, and um, ah, it's way over, and I am so late, so late, so late. I am going to have to, okay, I see a couple of Cs for Outdoor Dash Travel, who's also part of my um, um, membership. Ark Rosebud says, wouldn't it be great if churches would put together some sort of organization to give van lifers and other living in the car? I have been saying that for so long. I have one. Now there is one church down in San Diego that they went a step further. They put little tiny houses on their parking lot for single moms and their children. But every church I've contacted has some excuse. Oh, you know, the insurance, you know, they, they probably are insurance. went. No, I mean, now, how could he get tiny houses built on his parking lot and they can't put up, they can't let people park there overnight? I don't know. Now, there are some churches that that have. I just haven't had any success in getting any around here to do it. Um, uh, let's see. Any, uh, Liza Beckerman is a content creator. Vaughn's on a roll. Intentional frugality and budgeting. Donna Flynn, voice breath, self-development. Development. Dogs are the best friend. Okay. So we've got a lot of content creators there. So go over and check out these content creators and give them some love. Plus Nora Keg over on um, Etsy. All right. I got to go. I keep saying that, but this is it. I'm uh, oh, one couple more. PR Brookman is a content creator. All right, folks. I'm sorry I'm missing all these comments, but it is now. We have been on here almost an hour and 45 minutes. So I am heading out. If I missed any of you, come back next week. And looking forward to first Saturday, lonely hearts, maybe warm hearts. I don't know. See if I get any other suggestions and we'll vote them. All right. I love each and every one of you. Have a great week. Be intentional, intentional about getting out, meeting people, extending yourself outside of your comfort zone. And you never know what joyful person you're going to meet that's going to just enrich your life far beyond what you could ever imagine. I know that's what's happened to me. The people I have met have enriched my lives far beyond what I could ever imagine. And happy birthday to Kenneth and Wanda. 
May you have a joyous and wonderful birthday. All right, guys. Have a great week. See you next Saturday, the same time, same place. And may your journeys be filled with joy and blessings. Bye. See you later. Now to some.